about your investments. We're just a touch away. Monday to Friday at 12.30 p.m. Only on Bloomberg Quint. Good morning. This is all you need to know. I am Agam Akhil. Let's start by taking a look at the global markets. At this point in time, again, mixed cues uh, from what we saw yesterday. But while we did see the Nasdaq come off to a certain extent, well, the other benchmark indices like Dow Jones and S&P did advance. And we've had that mixed reaction coming in the European markets too. The largely range-bound day of trade. Uh, not too much to speak for when it comes to Asian markets either. Let's bring up and see whether or not we have some sort of an impact on the SGX Nifty, which at this point time is indicating an up move around 37 points and which means that we are likely to see a positive opening coming through when it comes to uh, our own markets yesterday or rather the eight ADRs uh, well we did we saw uh, once again range bound moves and from Dr. Reddy's a Wipro and even if you consider the other ADRs not too much to speak for some declines for ICICI Bank and HDFC Bank but come down to our own markets yesterday again uh, well consolidation continues as we saw with less than uh, 0.3 percent decline for the nifty is the same for the mid cap and the small cap indices a very small very quiet day of trade and uh, it's only essentially the nifty PSU banking index which stands out on the back of gains that we saw in SBI which came out with its earnings in the last 20 odd minutes of the market closing but that said let's move in and talk about other sectoral indices and we have some weakness in the nifty media index that's down by as much as 1.4 percent from an institutional standpoint, there was very little happening from the FIS point of view. DIS, however, did sell stock worth 622 odd crores on a net basis. But uh, well, uh, moving on, contributors, well, we did have some support from Reliance Industries as we are an access bank. Uh, and on the other hand, this was to counter something like an HDFC, uh, ITC, as well as ICICI Bank, which bear down on the indices. But coming down to the futures and options space, a very quiet day of trade, very little change in open interest for the Nifty futures or the Nifty banking futures. Uh, there was, as you can see on your screen, there's very little change there. Now, when it comes to your open interest distribution, uh, it continue, your maximum open interest continues to be with your 10,200 put, which will uh, serve as your near-term uh, well, uh, support. And on the, on the higher end, we do have a lot of activity and writing around the, anywhere between 10,700 to uh, right through 11,000 calls. So, well, we still have to wait and watch for that uh, to, uh, to develop as we move into the November series. But uh, when it comes to yesterday, what the only option that really stands out is the 11,000 call where we saw a considerable amount of writing. But let's move on and take a look at the put call ratio. It really hasn't changed too much for the Nifty at around 1.58, for the Nifty bank, uh, banking put call ratio at around 1.31. In terms of stocks, what I want to pull up is the Ramco Cement. Now, this one went up, and we did see some short covering coming through. But uh, a bunch of other stocks which are weak, uh, we had Divan Housing Finance, fresh shots there. Other than Divan Housing Finance, we also saw Sun TV decline by nearly 7%, and we saw fresh shots uh, following Sun TV. We also have Bal Krishna Industries, and there's some concerns with respect to volumes going forward, and that's where we saw some fresh shots building in too. But that's as far as our own markets are concerned. Let's now go across to Paul Allen of Bloomberg for the top international headlines. President Trump's been on the road and on Twitter urging supporters to get out and vote Republican as the most expensive midterm campaign in history heads for the finish line. Markets are bracing for the Democrats to potentially win the House while the GOP retains the Senate, which could dramatically alter the second half of Trump's term. The outcome may hinge on what could be a larger than normal turnout. The Trump administration is warning companies and countries around the world that dodging sanctions on Iran will hurt. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo promised that defying the measures would ultimately be far more painful than withdrawing from Iran. The U.S. has imposed penalties on 700 individuals, banks, shippers and companies tied to Iran's energy and financial industries. The Iranian regime has a choice. It can either do a 180 degree turn from its outlaw course of action and act like a normal country, or it can see its economy crumble. We hope a new agreement with Iran is possible. But until Iran makes changes in the 12 ways that I listed in May, we will be relentless in exerting pressure on the regime. 
UK Cabinet meets later on Tuesday, but sources say Theresa May won't ask ministers to approve the terms of a Brexit deal with Brussels. We're told the Prime Minister will offer an update on two weeks of mid-level technical talks, with the two sides pushing back at reports and accord is all but agreed. The EU is refusing to call the summit until it's sure it wouldn't be a waste of time. Lego has won an intellectual property suit in China as a court agreed that local companies had copied its famous bricks and figures. The judge ruled that the four defendants must cease production immediately and pay Lego about $650,000 in damages. Lego won two earlier victories in China last year, securing recognition of its logo and its name in the mainland. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Paul Allen. This is Bloomberg. Remember, we were all speaking about Brent crude between $80 and $100 a barrel, and then those crazy whisper, crazy whisper numbers of around $400 a barrel? Well, guess what? It didn't really work out. And the reason why is we talk about the fundamentals and why markets should break and rally because of the fundamentals, and we also talk about the technicals. But there's something we also don't talk about, and this is a classic example. When you want to put a position on in these type of markets, especially the commodity markets, and you're expecting something to happen, you have to realize, or at least have the four foresight to think about who's going to let you out of your position. So all these guys, all these traders, all these investors got long crude oil because they thought the Iran sanctions were going to be a big deal. There's going to be some global supply issues. The U.S. economy is doing well. But guess what? If things, they got all those things, but at the same time, no one's going to let them out of their position. So maybe when you think that the market should be rallying and it's breaking, that's a classic example of the market psychology saying, hey, we need to attract new buyers in the market to let us out of our longs. And they just didn't get any new buyers buyers coming to the market on the back of that bullish news. So th this is what happens sometimes when psychology takes over the fundamentals and yes. the technicals. So WTI crude at 63.75 is roughly yeah. fair value, you would say, and a $10 spread with Brent is about right too? Yeah, 10, I like 10, and yeah, I mean, 63 is going to be fair because, I mean, well, you know what, we might have a little bit of capitulation here because there are going to be some folks that get out here because they can't stand to be long anymore, and that might cause some more problems, and the U.S. dollar is not really going to help them either. So I haven't really seen the capitulation yet, so up until then, yeah, we can slowly but surely drift lower, but we've had the bullish news, and it was tempered with Pompeo's, uh, you know, the eight countries that got the, the waivers, um, and what's going to be the next big thing that let you out of your position? If you're long, and that's the problem the longs have right now. Crude oil prices fell to a seven month low as concerns eased that US sanctions on Iran uh, will squeeze global supplies. Crude oil prices ended lower on Monday for a seventh consecutive trading session uh, as American sanctions against OPEC's number three uh, producer formally kicked in. However, the Trump administration has granted waiver to China, India, and six other major buyers so that they can continue buying uh, some amount of Iranian oil. Uh, meanwhile, positive cues coming in from the US inventory data as well. So, all of these factors. Uh, bringing down the crude oil prices. As far as the base metal space is concerned, uh, sharp cuts seen in names such as copper, copper, nickel, lead, uh, and barring aluminum, all of the base metal names, they ended lower on Monday after, after a speech from the Chinese president indicated no, no signs of an early resolution to the trade war and fears of a slowdown in Asia's largest economy. As far as gold prices are concerned, after starting on a positive note uh, in the month of November, uh, they have slipped for a third consecutive day as analysts and traders uh, remain split uh, on the outlook for the, for the metal amid uncertainty ahead of this week's vote. Well, bunch of news that we're tracking this morning. I'm going to start off with ACC, which has approved the right issue. We're going to be discussing about the details uh, in the board meeting that's going to be conducted in uh, November 12. Now, the second uh, one in our list is Natco Pharma. On account of that buyback, the company is buying back around 8.1 percent, more than 8 percent of its equity at a price uh, per share of rupees thousand, which is indicative of a premium of more than 20 percent from the current market price. So that's one counter that we like to keep an eye out. Minda Industry, it has approved an investment of 77 crore for setting up a plant in Maharashtra which is going to be supplying uh, which is going to be supplying to OEMs and also we have uh, in bulk deals we're tracking in NIIT technology where uh, William Blair and company would be selling in zero point stake percent uh, zero point stake in the company uh, for a price of around 1176 it has already sold in that uh, particular share and also if you look at the selling side we have Matthews International Funds which has bought in uh, a zero point 
5% stake in the counter for a consideration of 1,176 per share. Uh, in terms of few earnings that we're tracking this morning, Power Grid, of, uh, Power Grid uh, Corporation, which is reported in line with estimates number, 14% uptake in top line growth. And if you look at the bottom line, we're looking at 7.9% uptake there. The key message in Q2 earnings this time around was that uh, the result, uh, that the peak capitalization will low its bad growth. That's the key message that we got uh, in the Power Grid review. And also, if you get look into the PNB housing finance number in line with estimate, it said quality pretty much stable. The growth to an extent disbursements has slowed down. 31% uptake there. Loan asset, if you look at the 37% jump there. And if you compare the performance on year on year basis, given that sequentially it's the same set of numbers, that's actually 0.45% uh, compares to 0.3%. Uh, and if you look at the all cargo logistics, subdued on bottom line, other mines uh, uh, a decent show on operational front. Uh, Gothrich Agrovate, however, has reported a downtick in its EBITDA number. Uh, we've seen a 3.7% downtick to a number of around 140 crore as compared to 146 crore, which has led to squeezing of margin or contractions of margin to 8.9% as compared to 10.2%. Phoenix Mills, a decent show and in line with operational performance. We've seen a 26%, uh, well, we've seen an 11% uptick there, but then uh, uh, it's pretty much in line with estimates and if you look at Balakrishna Industries where uh, where the revenue is up by 18.9 percent and if you look at the EBITDA of uh, a growth of 9.1 percent but then the company has cut the volume guidance for FI19 from what had been earmarked earlier. President Trump is on an exhaustive last minute sweep through uh, several states that are key states for the Senate and Senate control. Uh, as you said, he's in Indiana at the moment, and then we'll travel on to Missouri. Both are home to Senate races where the Democrat currently holds the seat. But President Trump won those states in 2016. And Republicans believe that they have a shot of potentially picking up one or both of those seats. Uh, President Trump has been focusing his campaign rallies on states where the Senate control is in play, as opposed to potentially competitive House districts, which the White House has largely given up on the idea of keeping the House for the Republicans. Uh, what the key thing to watch in the upcoming election will be turnout. Uh, that will largely dictate where the House goes, where the Senate goes, and if they do indeed split control. On the big brokerage calls for the day, first we have is Deutsche Bank on Gale India. Now, the brokerage has maintained its hold rating on the stock, but has raised the target price on, on Gale India to 395 from 365. Now, according to the brokerage, Gale India earnings were boosted by a strong performance from the gas trading business. But the company's gas transmission also reported robust profitability on the back of the revision in pipeline tariffs that we had seen in the second quarter of financial year 2019. Also, as Brent crude continues to hover around the $70 per barrel mark, the concerns over potential loss on Gale's US, uh, US LNG contracts have receded, says the brokerage. Lastly, despite a strong earnings, the brokerage has maintained its hold rating on Gale India on the back of expensive valuations. Second, we have is Nomura on SBI. Now, the brokerage has maintained its buy rating on the stock with a target price of 360. Now, according to the brokerage, SBI's Q2 performance was better than expected on core pre provisioning operating profit and in line when it comes to the asset quality. Now, as the bank is at the end of the credit cycle, the brokerage expects the net interest margins to improve from current levels with normalized credit costs by financial year 2020. Lastly, it says that the valuations are reasonable when it comes to SBI given the improving pricing power and stable asset quality of the bank. All right. Uh, well, there's clearly lots to talk about uh, before we slip into the midweek market holiday and that's uh, everyone moving into the Diwali mood. But here are a couple of stories that you'll find on the website if you look right now. First up, if Chinese President Xi Jinping was getting ready to make a, a big concession to the US, his much-anticipated speech at a China trade fair didn't show it. In fact, Xi hit back against President Donald Trump's America First policies on Monday with some of his most pointed language yet, denouncing what he called the law of the jungle and beggar thy neighbor trade practices. At the same time, he didn't outline any new proposals that would suggest that he was prepared to meet Trump's demand. Meanwhile, billionaire Alibaba co-founder Jack Ma called fighting over trade senseless. The finance ministry is eyeing 8,000 crore rupees through the launch of follow-on public offer of the CPSC's exchange-traded fund by the end of this month. 
And finally, it's not getting better in Delhi. Air quality deteriorated further on Monday to severe for the second time in, within a week due to a change in the direction of the wind and also apparently because of the burning of stubble in neighbouring states. Well, that's all we have for you in this edition of All You Need to Know. Uh, for all of us uh, here, from all of us here at Bloomberg Quint, here's wishing you a very happy Diwali and a very prosperous New Year. Do stay tuned over the course of the day to Bloomberg Quint.